What's going on guys, Matt here from Become Elite and welcome to the video. So first things first, I just wanna say I finally got the blue check on Instagram. It felt like it's been forever, but I finally got it. So if you guys aren't already, go check me out and go follow me on Instagram because you can just you know be rest assured that that's the official Matt Sheldon page. Anyway, on a more serious note, this video is going to be about seven drills that I wish I did more of as a kid. So if you guys don't already know, I'm a professional footballer for FC Tulsa here in the second division of America, but I definitely didn't have the best route to the pro game in terms of my youth career. I was never on development academy team, I never did ODP, and I really kind of flew under the radar for like the first 18 to 19 years of my life. A lot of my training was individual, just playing 1v1s with my brother, trying to learn freestyle juggling tricks, and just kind of playing for fun. And although I think I did really well, obviously I think I really developed a ton, there's a lot of stuff looking back on it that I wish I might have done a little bit differently, or areas or drills or whatever that I wish I would have focused more on. The first drill that I really wish I would have done more of is just rondos. I think rondos is one of the best drills out there if you have a small group of people just to work on speed of play, first touch, passing, and game realistic passing pattern. You know, being an American, I didn't have all of my neighbors constantly playing soccer outside in futsal courts or anything. It was kind of like we played basketball, football, baseball, rode our bikes around, and there wasn't that many kids. I don't think any kids in my neighborhood really focused or really were serious about soccer besides me and my brother. So because of that, me and my brother did a lot of 1v1s against each other, a lot of dribbling drills, but we didn't get that small group, fast speed of play type training that a lot of other kids in other countries got to do. Personally for me, I felt that when I made that transition from the collegiate level to the professional level, I kind of struggled a little bit with that speed of play and first touch and just quick thinking that's required at the professional level. So looking back on it, I wish I could have told my youth coaches or just my my friends or whoever I was training with, do rondos, do tight space, small group stuff, and pass, 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 pass. The second drill that I really wish I would have focused more on as a kid going off of that passing, kind of speed of play type drill, is doing wall passing and wall juggling. I know it's really difficult to get a really good group of like seven to 10 players to be able to play rondos all the time, but I would have gone back and told my younger self, look, if you don't have that group, you don't have that small group in order to play rondos or, or small space games or whatever, just go to a wall. Go to a wall and do one and two touch passes and focus on perfectly hitting the ball every single time so it's skimming across the ground and returning perfectly back to you. Or just work on doing one touch, two touch juggling against the wall and work on controlling it out of the air perfectly every single time. Like I said, I really only had my brother to train with when I was younger, so we, we did a lot of dribbling drills, a lot of 1v1, um, and a lot of freestyle juggling, but we didn't focus on that passing and receiving, or we didn't focus on juggling and hitting the ball to each other and perfecting the first touch. It was kind of just games. It was kind of like, oh, can we do it around the world? Oh, can we do these dribbling drills? Can we do the Ronaldinho drill, which were great and really, really helped our ball mastery. It really helped our dribbling, but I really didn't focus on perfecting the first touch or the pass as much as I would have liked to. The third drill that I wish I would have focused more on as a kid is the game of two touch. Two touch is just a juggling game where you try to keep the ball up using two touches each, and if you drop the ball or miscontrol the ball, you lose. It's a very simple game, but it's a game that I play in my professional trainings almost every single day before and after training. And I honestly think it's an amazing drill that really translates over to the real game. I've noticed over the years of playing two touch that as I've worked to control that ball out of the air and focus on perfecting the touch and having a clean touch every single time, that it really helps my first touch and control of the ball in the games. And it's incredibly fun. And I really didn't start playing it till I was about 20, 21 years old. So I wish I could go back teach this game to my younger self, teach this to my teammates, and play it every single day before training, after training, or with my brother in my front yard. The fourth thrill that I really wish I would have focused more on as a kid is simple passing combinations. And, and this goes for everything. Everything from a square pass where you're passing the ball around a square using two touches and just opening up, or doing give and goes around each cone, or doing other Y passes, or any sort of passing combinations with a group of players just really helps perfect that first touch, focusing on hitting the ball with the perfect amount of weight to your partner so that he can take the perfect touch and just really focusing so the passes aren't bobbling and everything's clean and sharp. I cannot convey how hugely important it is at the professional level to be able to hit the perfect pass with the perfect amount of weight so that it's skimming across the ground to the partner's right foot or his left foot or whatever the ball needs to go every single time consistently and perfect. That basic fundamental skill 
skill is something that honestly I thought as a 13, 14, 15 year old kid that I had already mastered. I was very naive and I was just in that little bubble of my team and I thought that if I had good one touch and two touch passing at that level, that it was fine at the next level. But again, as I moved up to the collegiate level, to the semi-professional level, and now to the professional level, I've noticed over the years that my passes were not nearly as consistent or as perfect as they needed to be. And actually when I was first training with my first professional team, that was something that they hounded and yelled at me about every single time that my passes weren't perfectly exactly where they needed to be with the perfect amount of weight. So I wish I could go back to my younger self and I wish I could tell him to just do more of these simple passing drills that almost seem too basic, but try to perfect it. Or if you're training with a small group, really, really focus in on these simple movements, these simple touches, and really trying to make them clean and sharp and perfect every single time. Drill number five that I wish I would have focused more on as a kid is mid distance lace passing. Now this is something that I really didn't know that I even needed until I, it was almost a little bit too late for me. Now this is the type of passing where you're about 30 to 40 yards away from a partner and you're just lacing it either on the ground or like below head height so that it's really traveling in a straight line all the way over to your partner, low, driven, and fast. When I was a kid, I worked on my long balls, my chip long balls as far as I could kick it. I worked on my instep passing, you know, a decent amount and I worked on like shooting either lacing it or knuckling it or doing that finesse shot but I never really worked on just passing the ball 20 or 30 yards in a straight line right to my partner every single time you know consistently and that pass is huge at the next level I mean everything from the goalkeeper hitting out a line drive out to the fullback or the center back or as a fullback hitting that ball driven down into a channel or into my striker's feet or as a center back hitting that into the striker's feet or out to the fullback or wherever it's just a pass that every player really needs to have in their arsenal so they can hit the ball out you know a mid-distance type pass but quickly and accurately and in a straight line drive and I really didn't start focusing and working on that pass until again, I was about 20, 21 years old, which is really late in the grand scheme of things. And I wish I could go back to my younger self and tell him how important that pass is at the professional level and how you need to master it with your right and left foot consistently, 80, 90% of the time. And to the credit of my younger self, to the credit of my 20, 21 year old self, once I got into the collegiate game and I was kind of moving to the semi-professional game, I recognized this all. I recognized that I was struggling with rondos. I recognized that my passes, one and two touch passes on the ground every single time weren't as consistent as I wanted them to be. I recognized that I didn't have the passing combinations that I wanted. I recognized that mid distance pass was something I wasn't that good at. So I worked a ton at it, but I wish I would have just worked on it at an earlier age. It would have just benefited me more now. The sixth drill that I really wish I would have focused more on as a kid is really just playing. I really wish I just did more futsal games, five aside, four v fours, just on the street, playing with my friends, playing with teammates, small sided games, and just being as creative as possible. Looking at some of my professional teammates now that have played for their national teams or played at the highest level, the guys that are the most comfortable on the ball, that are the quickest on the ball, that have the fastest speed of play, they spent their entire childhood all the way up to their teenage years playing futsal or five aside every single day. And again, you know, being in suburban America in the 90s and early 2000s, soccer wasn't big at all. And again, none of my neighbors even really played. So I definitely think it would be hard, but I wish I could have just set myself up or got myself on some, some actual organized futsal teams. I wish I just would have done more small sided games when I was younger. And the final thing that I wish I would have focused more on as a kid is doing fitness with the ball. Once again, growing up in America, in the early 90s or in the early 2000s, we really didn't have the academy setups that we have now. We don't have the same training and the same coaches that we have now. A lot of my coaches just kind of ran us. We just ran without the ball, thinking that fitness was just such a huge part of the game. And it is, don't get me wrong, but I think you can do majority of the fitness with the ball, playing games or even doing anything where you're doing a, a sprint, a, a shuttle run, coming back and then doing some sort of ball work, a pass or something. I mean, whenever you look at a professional team, majority of the time when they're doing running or fitness, there's a little bit of ball work, maybe even a header, a little in-step pass, dribbling through a little bit of cones while they're doing their fitness, just to make it a little bit more game realistic than just running without the ball for six, 10, 15 minutes or doing 10 sprints or whatever. 
adding the ball in is just so much more beneficial than just doing your fitness without it. Now, I definitely think there's a time and place to do the John Terry cardio workout or to do laps around a track or to time your two mile or just to do full field sprints, something without the ball. But I think majority of the time, especially, especially as a kid, you should try to add in the ball whenever you can. And the final note that I wanna say is that this list was for me personally. This is for my unique situation, my upbringing and everything, just things that I would have wished I would have done a little bit differently. I know tons of pros and I've talked to tons of pros where when I asked them what they would have done differently with their youth training, they say that they did too much ball work, that they said they focused so much on just passing and first touch and everything, but they never focused on the nutrition side, the gym side, the fitness side, or maybe they never focused on shooting or they never focused on whatever. So it's different from player to player, but this is my list for me as a kid that I wish I would have done maybe a little bit differently. Anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. If you did, please, please, please hit the thumbs up button. It helps out the channel so much. We've been growing a ton, which is awesome to see. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, guys, peace.